All right, so they went back in Young Thug's house. They, uh, the feds, after the RICO indictment, they went back in. They pulled out guns and drugs that are charging them with um, conspiracy to distribute several different drugs and possession of a firearm, sawed-off shotgun, and gang participant in a gang, which is, again, its own law down in Georgia. So... They're uh, stacking it up, and this is not a superseding indictment. These are separate charges, and then, of course, this is all in the state. It's possible he could beat some of this stuff in the uh, state, and the feds could still come get him. And whether they're, they're guilty or not, I mean, what is the motivations of uh, feds? I'm not saying they shouldn't arrest people, but, you know, you arrest high-profile people, you get possibly book deals out of it, et cetera. Kamala Harris parlayed her high-profile prosecutions in the vice presidency. The most disturbing new information that came out is, so we knew that the YFN Lucci stabbing in the county jail was part of it, and there was speculation with, you know, how did they know did YFN Lucci tell? But it appears that there's, uh, like transcript from a video Zoom call that Young Thug made with somebody. Now, it's not clear if Young Thug said anything or it was like a three-way and he was making hand signs, but he was on some kind of call with the guys who were then, and the stabbing was caught in action because it says the guards were trying to break it up and they had to tase him, so it was like a big melee. And, you know, going back to the point about prosecutors and wanting high profile people. YFN Lucci's indictment is has more charges than this one. They got 105 charges. Uh, uh, YSL is like 56 or something. And as for Gunna, you know, there's people are saying, well, what's he charged with just wearing a YSL chain, which also stands for Yves Saint Laurent. And Gunna is a known uh, fashion plate. But psh, I mean, if somebody that's one of their inner informants is saying Gunner was in the room when something was even talked about, like you don't have to do anything. If you and your friends are in a group together and you hear two of them talking about whatever, shooting drugs, I mean, they can say that's conspiracy. I mean, you're supposed to go tell law enforcement, I guess, technically, though, that's pretty absurd sounding. So if you're not involved in anything, best to leave the room if anything's going on. Oh, it's hard to know when anything's going on. I did a, in, in things that don't seem that big of a deal could be in court. I did a story on the guy Cuban Harry, who was the lean supplier to uh, like Drake and other big celebrities, Chris Brown. He had 35 years. Now, was it for just selling lean? No, he had a robbery crew breaking into pharmacies and taking them. But you know, somebody could have been, say, in a gang with him and just thought they were selling lean and not knowing where it came from and could have got roped in some other stuff. Does not look good for Thug, especially if there's that Zoom video call. As for Gunna, uh, why does he have no bond? He only has the RICO charge, which carries 5 to 20, which is, I mean, serious time. But other than life uh, cases, usually you almost always get bond. Uh, I don't know why they would think a celebrity is a flight risk, but they always try to keep you in jail to keep the pressure on you. That's a standard tactic. So I would look for Gunna to get uh, some type of bond uh, relatively soon. And of course, the question about Gunna is, you know, just a year and a half ago or whatever in mid 2020, there was the whole Crime Stoppers thing that came out from in his past where, I mean, it's kind of borderline. I mean, it seems like what a regular person would say, hey, my cousin's in, got convicted. His cousin's still doing life. He didn't get out. No other person was convicted, but this other guy did it. It seemed like he was saying the other guy's name, which, I mean, it, true criminals is, is, is snitching especially if those guys were in some type of gang operation together. I don't know. Gunner on the Crime Stopper show was sure presenting himself as just a regular good kid. 
he seemed to have gotten out of that controversy, and that's pretty much happens with rappers. If people like you and you're popular, they look past, are you snitching or this and that. Takashi, for example, people were looking for a reason to hate him. So, you know, I mean, and he got on the stand and all that. But um, people were saying this gun of the week link. I mean, not necessarily. He's only looking at five to 20. I don't think he has much of a criminal record. Again, no. These RICO indictments, they have all these predicate acts that add up to the conspiracy and the state or the feds could start charging them with the independent crimes, charge them with murder separately, charge them with this separately. Like they just hit thug with these other charges outside of the RICO. So now you're holding all sorts of things over them in that Zoom phone call. That doesn't sound too good. Now as for Casanova, couple days ago, right after he took his plea to Rico and distributing over 100 kilograms of marijuana, he, they said he was in uh, suicide watch, and that was true, because when he appeared in court the next day, he, the judge asked him how he was doing, and he said, they got me in an observation room, I'm wearing a smock, and he did say when he was in jail years before as a teenager, he did attempt to commit suicide and sought psychiatric help so that wasn't sounding too good but the next day he had a more uh, upbeat social media post it looked like someone took a screenshot from the visiting room um but that might have just been the meds as to what he's gonna get sentenced to i mean what he pled guilty to isn't that awful the marijuana and a rico but i think that they determine your sentencing under the rico on what went on in the rico was it just a drug Rico? Well, Gorilla Stone has a bunch of violent crimes, including some violent crimes that he might, I can't tell from reading it, are they getting rid of these charges? If for him pleading guilty, I would imagine they are. The shooting at a dice game in Miami and the thing, I don't know what they were thinking about when they were in Brooklyn and the girl was holding up her phone, videotaping him eating and he, they had people attack her, they choked her out, and this was all on yet another video camera. And for a guy that's already been to prison several times, forearm robbery, not good. Of course, he's eligible for a uh, career offender, which I think he can get, I can get life eligible for life for that. So he's looking at five to 60, which is a big range. I, I mean, I would imagine he's got to get 15 years based on his record. I mean, and there were murders in the, uh, in the RICO, though he's not charged with them. But like I said, some shootings he uh, was, was linked to. And um, Gorilla Stone was pretty, pretty brazen. One of the incidents, one of the murders, the guys who did it, and this is all on like wiretaps and seized messages. Allegedly, the car that he used in the killing, I think in Poughkeepsie, New York, and he took it to Brooklyn got picked up by the police, so he was all panicked. And apparently some Gorilla Stone went into the police impound, stole the car, and they drove it to Upper Manhattan and burned it. So a pretty ruthless Gorilla Stone was obviously a blood set. They were divided into eight caves. And uh, a guy named one of the best gang nicknames I've ever heard, the leader of Gorilla Stone, is Dick Wolf. Uh, who was Dick Wolf? Dick Wolf's the creator of the Law & Order show, so I assume he, he, he means he's the law and order because he's the gang boss. I don't know, but that's a good nickname. Uh, Reed is his name. And um, Dwight Reed, I think. And Reed shot a guy in point blank range in a bar in Harlem in 2014, went on the run, and he had kind of got away, but he was uh, somewhere in like a small or medium city in Pennsylvania, got pulled over, had fake ID or something, and they eventually extradited him to New York. So he's doing 50 years in prison and he was on all kind of calls with them and Casanova was supposedly sharing proceeds of, I guess he was kind of overseeing the marijuana operation, which was still illegal in New York and other places when they were doing it. But boy, I wonder what the sentencing, like as it gets more and more legal, I don't know what's up with the marijuana thing. So he may get lucky in the end and like maybe get 10 or 12 and then after four or five years because of the weed stuff goes away, maybe he can get out. I don't know, but because of his record, seems pretty bad. And there was a wiretap or a uh, electronic communication intercept 
where a member of Gorilla Stone was saying how uh, Casanova always liked to carry guns and he worried that would tarnish, that he was going to, you know, catch a case and that would mess up his image and being signed to Rock Nation and he, he was right. So Casanova seems up and down mentally in there. You know, it's one thing when you're young and rough to go to jail, but once you've had a taste of comfort and money and living a good life, it's really hard to go back into jail for a long period of time, especially when you seemingly had it made in the shade. Though, maybe if you took all this street stuff that they're alleged to have done away from a lot of these rappers, they wouldn't be so exciting. There wouldn't be an air of danger around them. And they're using these, in, in, uh, especially in uh, the YSL case, I mean, the lyrics are a big part of it. They're matching lyrics to events, which sounds bad, and that happens in cases a lot. I did a documentary called The T. Stucky Story about a guy from Detroit who got, he got life no parole because there was a murder of a cop involved back in 04, maybe, and they used his lyrics against him. Now, my friend who was his friend was subpoenaed, and they had to testify, and they said that they wrote the lyrics for him, which they did. Uh, but the lyrics were just like a murder in the case. Somebody got wrapped up in a carpet and dumped, which sounds bad, and they used it against him, but it came out after he was sentenced. And there was a bunch of other stuff, but I think in that particular incident, it did come out that a known informant that was used in the case told that same story about something, someone getting wrapped in a carpet. Uh, he tried to get another guy separate convicted with that description of events. That guy beat the case, and then that informant ended up admitting, well, no, it was him that had killed the guy in that case and wrapped him in a carpet, so maybe he did it in the other case. Steve Felder, I think, was the informant's name. So go check out the T. Stucky story. So, and then, of course, they caught TFA, THF Bezu, who I think was on the murder case with King Von back in the day, in O Block with, in a car with some guns with switches, and he's supposedly, you know, I guess a dangerous guy, I don't know what charges. He's gonna face O Block, just had five guys indicted, which included the murder of FBG Duck. So clearly, so I know what goes on. I mean, I've interviewed federal prosecutors from different documentaries, I follow news stories. What they do in each region is they determine which set of crime or which type of crime is their priority. So they could be going after large scale medical fraud in Denver. They could be going after biker gangs in Detroit. They could be going after the mafia in Philadelphia. But apparently in a lot of these cities, they're going after uh, rappers affiliated with street gangs. So it's not going to stop. I don't think it's going to stop. Interesting, though, you don't really see L.A. rappers getting caught up in this stuff. Now, there's not just that many popping rappers, but there's some. I mean, they, and they got supposedly, you know, street ties, but the, the gangs of L.A. are not RICO operations. They are not organized crime. You do not have to be a criminal to be a, a respected member of an L.A. street gang. You just got to Somebody asks you where you're from, you gotta say it, you gotta help out the neighborhood. Now, some people in gangs might do stuff, but the LA gangs are not RICO organizations, whereas I think in some of these other cities, just in general, you might have people that might be doing something and it's convenient. And like, even like the Bloods, I don't even know if they're copying it from LA. I think it's just something in the pop culture. It's like how rappers in the 90s would take on mafia names. You know, it's just something they think is cool that they heard in a song, saw in a movie. It's convenient when you go out of town to say, oh, I'm this and that too. Now, there's a older guy from the rolling 20s bloods here in L.A., Mad Ronald, who he seems like he got kind of roped into some, some bullshit case because he was talking, I think, just on a message board, supposedly, to people that said they were bloods in Atlanta once again. And I think he's still in the LA County Jail. They hit him in some big Rico. I don't know the specifics of that case. The way I read it described seemed pretty bad. Like he literally was just talking to somebody on a message board. But, uh, you know, like there was a period of time in, like say when I was little, late 70s, all through the late 80s, 
guys in Detroit on one of their different names, Pony Down, YVI. And then after all that was on the front page, White Boy Rick, Maserati Rick. If you have a catchy name, you're the one going to jail. So then there came a generation of people that didn't, I don't want to have no name. We just do what we do and there, there's no name on it. And I don't, these, all these guys that want to have names for what they're doing, they must not have had anyone older around to tell them don't do it or maybe it just was something they were doing very young and just became regular to them but just saying you're a part of the same group with somebody that has a name now they can tie all these different people who might not have of them even know each other together so and a lot of uh, legal scholars think this kind of use of the RICO is inappropriate it was meant to be used against like the Teamsters and the Mafia and stuff like that actual like super organized crime not just a group of people that might all maybe be committing crimes but so that's the update that's what's going on uh casanova doesn't get sentenced to december 6th and let's see if gunner gets out on bond and see what's up with wife and lucci i mean it doesn't seem like he's telling the evidence came from a zoom call so Pray for, pray for Young Thug and hope for the best for Casanova, but I don't know. We'll see how Prophet American dope.